a paid professional installation company to install the solar system up here on the roof. Now, it is 12.5 kilowatt and it performs wonderfully. My electric bill's been zero since the day I installed it. As a matter of fact, I get $100, $150 back every year with the excess electricity that it generates. Because I'm in Florida, where I get a net zero account. Now what they did was exactly what I asked. 10 panels here, three panels over the side, two more on the east side, three on the west side, and another 13 on the north side. I wanted a zero bill. They created a zero bill. But had I known then what I know now, there's a lot of things I would do differently. So let's break down what the system is, and then we can get into my regrets and what I would do completely differently with what I know today. Now, don't get me wrong, the system performs incredibly well. The microwaves run, the dishwashers run, even the electric stove, oven runs, washer and dryer, and the hot water heater, and it's all electric. So the system performs incredibly well, and because it's grid tied, I never have to worry about 10 kilowatts of inverter power being enough, because when it's short, as you saw out there at the meter, it can pull in from the grid. And when it has more than it needs, it can push to the grid. So for those that are interested really in a system that is only here to save money from the electric bill, a variation of this is really what you want. It's much less complicated because there's no batteries. The, when you're grid tied, you're basically taking the solar panels, converting them into energy. If you use that energy, it goes into your house and you use it. If you don't, it goes back out onto the grid and one of your neighbors or somewhere else in the, in the uh, electric company gets to use it. And then they give you a credit for that power that you've given them back at some point in the future. Now, Unlike Florida, many places do not give you a one-to-one. -one. In other words, if you generate an extra kilowatt of power, they usually only give you a partial credit for kilowatts that you want to use later. Meaning, just some random math, for example, you may be paying 20 cents a kilowatt, and though if you use a kilowatt, it costs you 20 cents. If you give them a kilowatt, they may only give you five or 10 cents a kilowatt. Meaning you will have to generate four or two or four kilowatts for every one that you use. So the idea is that you want to use the exact, generate exactly the amount that you use, don't have any overages, don't have any underages, at the absolute most. Giving it back to the electric company or to, to, the, to the electric company almost never makes financial sense with the exception of you want to generate enough to zero out your bill. In other words, it's still cheaper to generate two to get one later if you don't want to have batteries. So that math may work out, but these are the kind of math that you really want to do. All right, let's talk a little bit about what I would do differently with this system, because that really is what, what we were all talking about here. Um, the cost and the convenience is expensive when you have somebody do it for you. And that's just a simple fact of life, and it's true with anything. Uh, but let's go through a few of them, what I mean here. Going through the, a company to have them do it for me was really fast and, and, and convenient because they have a ton of labor to throw at it. They've got all the, the professional design tools. They've got all the math down to a science. They calculate everything out. They lay the, they lay the panels out with, with websites. Uh, and, and basically, it does all the calculations of angles and roof pitches and all that for them to tell them exactly what they need to accomplish the goals of what we're doing here. But it comes with a, a serious price and you pay for it. And I'll get into some of the details of how. The markup on the panels, on the inverter, on the labor, all of it is more. They're going to guarantee it. They're going to install it. They're going to charge you for it. You're not getting it for free, even though that may feel what it is. You're paying a premium for it. Uh, and in, for some of this, that's okay. The warranty, I will say, the warranty is fantastic. If something breaks, they call me on the phone and they say, hey, look, we got a module that shows that it's out. We're going to come by on Tuesday and fix it. Are you okay with that? And I say, yes, they show up and they do it. 
As long as there aren't dogs in the way, they're cool. So that part of it is, is fantastic. Uh, what, what, what I would have done in a DIY version is I would have used a hybrid system which would have allowed me the possibility of going forward of adding batteries to it. This is the Solar Edge HD Wave. It takes 380 to 480 volts DC input, converts it to AC, runs it through here, back feeds it into the system. So would I have done a hybrid so that if the power went out and I lose the grid, instead of all of this shutting down, that it would have just switched over to some batteries I had mounted out here? Yes, I would. That's that's the big key thing that I would have done. I would have it would have saved me 30 to 40 percent on the cost of the inverter. Um, um, and that still in itself would have been a huge savings over the you know fifty five sixty thousand dollars that the system cost. Um, if I did it again I would consider that buying the hardware myself and locally sourcing someone to do each part of it. In other words, I would become the general contractor and I would hire out people to do each aspect of it myself. Now, I understand what needs to be installed, what the equipment is, and how to design a system to go together at this point. And when I got this system, I didn't know as much about it, so I trusted the people that were where with me. But what I'm not understanding, what I didn't understand, is that they don't have my interest in hand a year from now. They want, everyone wants a turnkey solution where you get the solar system and you forget about it. And now I have payments on this for 25 years. And some regrets of things like if I want to put a battery system on it, I have to add another, either add another system inside to a panel and, and a whole bunch of complexity. So that's something that I would definitely would have changed. Um, the monitoring is locked down where they are the administrator. That is something that I would change uh, because the installer registered everything themselves, and because they're doing the monitoring for me, um, I can't access the inverter directly. Now, I can get to the Solar Edge application, but it's the customer variation of the application which shows me general information about how many kilowatts a day I take in. Uh, I don't have insight to every single panel. I don't have insight to the the um, uh, the tools that show me how to to diagnose and look at all the details behind it. So that's something that I would do differently. If it was me doing it, I would probably use a hybrid inverter and I would also be the person of, of um, registration on it so that I would have full control and administrative rights on it. Um, when I want stats, I have to go through their portal and it's very frustrating uh, and irritating to have to do that because um, I can't link this in, for example, I can't link this in directly to Home Assistant with even though Home Assistant is compatible with it, unless I have that portal's admin account to give Home Assistant access to read that data. So that part of it is kind of frustrating that I have a $60,000 solar system on my house and I can't link it into my Home Assistant in order to tell me to turn things on and turn things off based on how sunny it is and how sunny it isn't. Uh, that's a little frustrating. Uh, the warranty coverage um, I, uh, because of the warranty coverage, I feel disconnected from my system because they're in control of everything. I don't have the control to monitor the way I want, to change anything the way I want, to add anything that I want, to put batteries on it, to add another inverter, to any of that stuff I can't do. Now, this is a 31 uh, panel, 415 watts a piece, 12.8. 8 kilowatts of solar on the roof running into a 10 kilowatt inverter. It zeroes my account over the year and I get usually between 80 and $100 of, of, of uh, uh, revenue at the end of the year where they just give them back to me. Which with the basic account of $30 a month, that comes down to, uh, it cancels out three of those months for me, just wipes them off the three to four of them get wiped out. So that basically means I pay the basic fee for uh, 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 nine months a year and the other three go away. Um, also, what would I do differently? Um, one of the other things that I didn't have any, con any real control over was the layout of the panels and the inverter type. And to be honest with you, what they did on the roof with 31 panels, I have panels on the south, I have panels on the north, I have panels on the east, I have panels on the west, and that layout was based on goals that I set for them of here's what I am wanted to accomplish. Instead of them coming back and saying, hey, 
you shouldn't do this. You should put the panels here. This is the most cost effective system we can get you. They did what I asked them to do and they turned my bill to zero. They turned my bill to zero, but I've got 13 panels on the north side of my house. I've got um, uh, two panels over here on the east side of the house and I got three panels on the west side of the house. They're the, not the most efficient panels that I could have when I have 13 panels on the front side of the house that are the most efficient and probably would have been better off with only those 13 panels and getting rid of a majority of my bill instead of all of my bill. Um, and then look at some other ways to, to work around some of the other aspects of it. I didn't have any real choice on the inverters or the solar or the brands that they were using. Uh, they did use good high quality equipment, the solar edge equipment I haven't had any problems out of. I did have a, one go out uh, the second month I had the system. Uh, they came out and replaced it. I also had a micro, uh, not a micro inverter, I also had an optimizer go out on one of the panels and they came and replaced it uh, about six months in. Um, I, so otherwise I haven't really had any problems, but I would have preferred to have a hybrid like a, an EG4 18 kPV or something along those lines where I could uh, or a grid boss or a flex boss where I could switch it into hybrid mode, hook up some external batteries and completely go off grid so that when I lost power, I would have power also. That would have been very, really nice. Also, uh, it would have been nice to control the, the panels on the roof and know the brand and know a little bit more about them and exactly what I have there. Uh, the only thing that they didn't do that I was kind of surprised is that this is a 380 to 480 volt DC doing something like the 18K or the grid boss, flex boss type scenario would have allowed me to expand and it would have given me the flexibility of having more solar panels in the yard or somewhere else because I've lost that control also. Another thing I would have done differently is I wouldn't have financed it. The financing fees were you know, 1% over a period of 25 years, but they've made selling the house very difficult. And this is one of the biggest regrets that I probably have is once you put that solar loan on the house, to pay for it, it makes it to where my electric bill is $100 less because I'm paying a solar panel bill instead. Uh, and it's fixed, so my electric bill never goes up. So, uh, but that made, that was very convenient. The problem is, is that that loan, let's just say that that loan is $30,000 is outstanding. Um, and I did get a uh, approximately $18,000 solar credit on it when I got it installed. So if I had $60,000 uh, $60, installation, 18 from that brought it down to um, $42,000, financed the $42,000, and then I have the payment of, let's say, $180 a month, where I was getting a $300 electric bill. So I did have a huge savings in electric bill every month, but now I have a $40,000 note on the house that a mortgage company does not consider as part of the, does not consider as any value. Uh, so you don't have the value of the panels on the house or the solar system because they are not paid for, yet you don't get the credit against the loan that you have for it. So basically all you end up is with the debt and none of the benefit because when they're paid for, they'll have hit life expectancy. So it's kind of one of those things that you really have to pay it off to make it work. Uh, you shouldn't uh, have a loan on it. It makes it very difficult to sell. And then a lot of the times too, fortunately mine, the transferring is fairly easy. So that's not really a big dish issue, but I know a lot of people lease the panels, which is an absolute no-no. I wouldn't get touched that with a 10 foot pole. Uh, anything to do with leasing and all of that. If it's me, one of my biggest regrets is, is that it wasn't paid for at the time that I did it or do it with a DIY variation of it and get the permitting done by a professional, that's how I would go back and do it now.